moving on from that one, moving on from that and what do I know? Let's talk about this topic, right? concerning academics we have to talk about the academic stuff so um academics is going through a fucking crazy situation at the moment where he's essentially being blackmailed or being threatened by two different women one woman is some sneaky link who is a- alleging that when she was you know taken back to academics's home two of his friends allegedly raped her and now she's suggesting that academics raped her too and then there's another woman who's academics is ex a lady called shy glizzy who's i think the, the main one who's been causing him a lot of problems recently the one that leaked the pictures of his pimpled belly um the one that allegedly you know slammed the door you know, on his mom's hand and shit essentially quote unquote hitting her the one that stole money from him loads of fucking crazy shit now she's um, in a situation where she allegedly stole half a million dollars five hundred thousand dollars in cash from academics um across a series of safes um a crazy situation but we're gonna play the video because he was on stream talking about it and i think it was probably one of the most entertaining streams i've seen in a long time because it was evidence if ever you needed it that if you don't work on yourself and you f- and you try to you know work on yourself if you don't work on yourself when you're down bad and you think money and power and clout can replace it you end up in these situations because it's clear as day to anybody especially dudes out there the academics thought that he could close that gap of not being a loser or being a loser and a bozo with money and unfortunately what he's seen is that if anything it's just made him a bigger target to people who can sniff out guys academics who clearly have you know insecurities issues that they've kind of dealt with that they haven't really big up sarlux white guilt (laughs) exactly (laughs) big up sarlux yeah so this is really a crazy situation, but we're going to watch the, the stream now where he speaks about it. And um, I'm going to obviously commentate along the way. But if you want to watch it yourself, it's on his channel, um, The Academy. It's also on his King Academics channel. Check out yourself. But I'm going to obviously be stopping it here and there as we watch it. But this is an incredible stream. The reason why I'm even going live about this, and I, and everybody's just spam one in the chat if you can hear me. One in the chat if you can hear me. One in the chat if you can hear me at all. Um, I just want to make sure we can see just off the short one academics is face i don't know if this is i don't know if that's his like bone structure or whatnot but he is so fat like it's incredible how fat he is and you you'll find out why because allegedly he's he drinks now every day every single day from eight in the morning which again is proof that you know people are different and built different but he drinks every single day from eight in the morning he has more money than he has time to spend it and obviously he has an addiction to fucking ratchet pitches. So this is the face of somebody that's been going through it, drinking a bunch and obviously staying up really late in the hours because he's looking really haggard. But I got to leave the house when there's going to be a situation that's arising. Um, first and foremost, I'm dealing with somebody who, you know, I've been, you know, at first and, and y'all going to hear a very multivariable story today because y'all going to. First, say, act, why have you been dealing with this? And the second thing you're going to say, act, you're an idiot. But Whenever somebody says you're going to be hearing a multivariable story, you know they're going to chat shit. I'm going to tell you all why I've been dealing with this. This is somebody who I feel like I've been trauma bonded to a little bit because of a situation where people were trying to run into my house and I felt she was responsible for, you know, kind of making sure it didn't happen, even though. You know what's funny? He still doesn't realize that that girl is the one that set him up. So if you're not aware, academics had um, a bit of a crazy run-in with some home invaders and um, him and his girl were in the house and they basically fought with the home invaders, right? They basically kept them at bay. I think they were fighting, some guns were, you know, some gunshots were fucking whatever exchanged. But to me and to most people on the internet, it seems pretty obvious that the home invasion thing was something that girl probably set up. That was an inside job. And for some reason, he doesn't realize it. You know, he doesn't realize that that was a probably an inside job. So that's the really sad situation of how damn bad he is. He can't even see that that girl was the one that set up the whole situation. Like it was her own friend that set the whole thing up. But also it's it's been a whole situation where, you know, despite that. Over time, like, oh, yeah, no, I ain't shit. So I ain't going to be sitting here and pretending I'm perfect or whatever. I'm a person like there's always going to be a problem with infidelity with a nigga like me. I'm going to keep it a being with you. So I ain't. <laughs> I love how he's talking like he's a fucking, like he's a stud. 
there's always going to be a problem with infidelity. I'm always going to cheat as if he's some sort of fucking Lafario or some shit. It's absolutely her- hilarious. That's always been the funniest thing about listening to Act. As much as I enjoy his streams, one of the things that's really hard to listen to him about is when he talks about women. When he acts like he's, you know, like a playboy or something. It's like, bro, you know you only started fucking when you started making money. Let's be fair. Like, guys know, right? Men them know. Men them know is a guy like Act only really started getting girls when he started getting money which is not a bad thing, but let's also chill out acting as if like this is normal, you know, because, you know, the way that you're interacting with these females, he's also using the money and what he has as a way to get them because he's always spoken about flying people out and stuff and buying them gifts. So he's clear, again, I think that's what you should do if you acquire wealth. As a man, if, you, if you're not attractive, you should use your money and your power to attract the women that you want because there are women out there that would be willing to exchange that, right? Exchange their bodies for your fucking money and whatever status is a bit gross but that is what it is but he acts like these girls are into him for him right that's what he acts like it's really strange he never gonna sit up here and be like i'm the perfect whatever whatever but we got a person who despite whatever that comes with me or doesn't come with me Pulse. they feel like they could threaten me with things that they believe that i would hold dearly and i would not ever expose or say or want to be known i'm just not that type of person nor would i would ever sit here and allow people to hold things over my head the moment and by the way this has been happening again, for months and every time like you know what i mean we never this is a weird way to deal with the situation because you don't want people holding things over your head you're going to expose yourself to the point where you look really terrible and it opens up a whole pandora's box of very dicey dicey allegations i know I, i'm all for extreme ownership and radical honesty but this is this is beyond some things you should keep to yourself never went public with it but i've also told this person like hey listen if we're gonna try to work this out i'm not into people trying to hold in things against me or over my head so whatever you think you could ever expose about me i'm gonna always say about myself and they always back down the center today i felt like they crossed the line i'll tell you what happened today so today you know troy Ave, he's actually um he signed to the academy Gave him a six figure deal. This is not my money. This is ain't this ain't by the way, that's a very bad deal. He has he has a really bad he's a really bad judge of character, isn't it? Six friend was six nine was once his best friend, and now he signed a six figure deal with Troy Ave. Like, what is with academics hanging around with these type of people? Or or is it the fact that those type of people sniff out people like academics? I wonder. This ain't back by no iHeart Media, none of that shit, nigga. This is my money. Like I could use that money to do anything with, just take the whole six figures and jerk my dick off with, I could do it whatever I want. But I wanna start building my company. I see a lot of people building what they got going on. I wanna build my company. Okay, I'm investing, cool. Um, he's filming, by the way, salute to my man Troy Avi, he's been doing an amazing job. What I mean, amazing job, like I'm dumb. Skip, 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 skip. Man, I came into this shit and I said, yo, bro, I've been making just- Let me skip a skip, skip, bear with me. Let's get to the juicy bits. I'm a nigga who grows four or five million dollars guaranteed every year myself. I don't need nobody. I don't need one person. I, it's me alone. Four so when he starts talking about money, when he starts talking about money, that is always an indication that he's going to be talking some shit. Whenever a guy starts talking about money first to absolve themselves of what they're going to be talking about, you know what's happening is going to be they're going to be talking shit. And it's going to be it's going to make them look bad. You know, so let me absolve myself. Let me protect myself. Let me put the money shield up before we get into the bullshit. Four, five mil every year. I'm telling y'all the truth. Y'all could think I'm bragging. Y'all could think whatever. I'm giving y'all the facts about what's going on. I'm not like these niggas. I need 50 niggas. So I say, yo, okay, cool. If I'm making four or five mile my damn self, I could really ramp the bitch up. And also, I also, announcing how much money you make and bragging about it in this way probably isn't the smartest thing to do if you're act. You're a bit of a walking lick anyway, right? You can't handle 25 year old women right so you probably shouldn't be announcing how much money you make flagrantly like this as a sort of like crocky thing because you're kind of making yourself a bit of a target again i don't you know whatever but maybe chill i could really especially after i did the spotify thing i said i could really rant this bitch up invest some of the money because i be gambling and losing a lot of money anyway let me invest some of the money and let's see what could really happen so i i, I took the money and I said, I bet I'm going to put a million dollars into investing in new ventures. This is why I respect certain people who be really investing in their own shit. And the reason why I'm saying that is because 
Man, it's easy to say another nigga paying the bill, man. It's the difference when you got to pay the bill. When okay, skip, skip, skip. Come on, man. Get to I'm a dude, plus I got a streaming goal. I got a streaming goal of 200 streams per year. That's why I don't want to hear anybody in my stream chat telling me that I waffle and ramble. I know I like to waffle and ramble, but no one waffles and rambles at Ak. No one does it like him. That's probably why he's the best at what he does, to be fair, because he can fucking talk around things before he actually gets to the point forever. He can just ramble and meander forever and fucking ever. Or this year, actually, and I was like, ah, shit, I don't know if I could make the stream, whatever, whatever. Anyway, it was agreed upon that, yo, listen, if I don't make the the award show, which they're doing right now, they're filming as we speak. I said, yo, y'all could just call me. I'm going to give y'all, I got some content I could give y'all, like, I'm going to whatever, whatever, whatever. They call me today, and this is where we get into the situation where where you have, like, a woman with you who just, just don't understand life and just also just... She's a detractor more than she's an additive to what you got going on. So Troy called me. We talking about a bunch of stuff. And I got this girl who I've been dealing with. And I could say her name at this point because it's just Hi, like, yo, it's, it's no water on the bridge. It's just reality. I've been dealing with a woman named Cheyenne for the last two years. She's on the side of me. And I'm talking to Troy on FaceTime. Bitch tugging on me like, yo, act, yo, show me, show me. I want to be seen. I'm like, yo, bro, chill out, bro. Like, I'm over here talking to Troy. We live. I know they're recording live. We agree this is live. Show me. I'm like, yo, bro, chill. I'm like looking off, like mute myself. Yo, chill for a second. Like, by the way, y'all probably have never noticed this. I'm on stream anytime she come no, in the room. We've noticed it. There's a really crazy video of them out together, right? Academics is out. I think that, yeah, they went to go see Dave Chappelle. They seen Dave Chappelle at some stand-up show. And she's on live. I swear to God, she's on live. This girl, Shy Cheyenne, they're what they're going. They're at some arena. I, I'm guessing it's Madison Square Garden. Watching Dave Chappelle stand up live, and his girlfriend is on fucking Facetime. No, it's on IG live, just ranting and screaming at random people as they're in the fucking you know. And again, yes, it's an arena, whatever. You should have to fucking be quiet for the show. And she's screaming at people on IG live, and Ak is trying to act like he can't hear her or he's not with her but they're sitting right next to each other it's fucking hilarious that girl is absolutely unhinged so don't worry academics we noticed i'm saying the same thing to her chill bro like yo what's wrong with you like just chill relax like like the stream don't want to hear about me and you my nigga they came here to listen to me my nigga like calm down like relax <laughs> referring to a girl as my nigga is fucking incredible isn't it yo my nigga <laughs> That's when you know you're in a toxic relationship. If you refer to your girl, your girlfriend as my bro, my nigga, <laughs> my G, it's not good. But you got all these girls that got this main character syndrome, all that type of shit going on. So she's tugging on me like, yo, show me, show Whoa. me. Like, I want, like, people think you single. I'm like, bro, like, what's up with you? Again, I'm going to keep it real with you. I ain't come here to look pretty. I ain't come here to be the. Come here to look pretty. Look at the pause. I didn't come here to look pretty. Oh, really? You didn't come here to look pretty with your two little baby braids on your front. Like, I didn't come here to look pretty. Don't worry, bro. We know. We know. <laughs> you know what's funny too? No homo. All the pictures of academics when he was a bit skinnier, younger, he actually was kind of cute looking. He wasn't as fugly as he is now. Like, he's pure evidence of what happens when dudes just let themselves go. He let himself go like he's in a relationship. He's not even in one, you know? He's like a bit of a bachelor. So if anything, he should be taking more care of himself because he's single, right? But he doesn't. He actually went the opposite way. It's crazy. And he's not even that old as well. So it's like... <sighs> be whatever y'all want to think. I came in to tell the truth. So y'all going to say a lot of things about me and I might agree. Yeah, I did some dumb shit. Because I, I even showed her. I'm like, shit, she fucking bugging me. I'm like, yo, all right, hey, look who I'm with. Blah, blah. She started getting, yo, yo, you better, you better. Like, yeah, there's a stream actually with um, academics and Sneeko. They go to Las Vegas. And that Cheyenne girl's in the videos. And she, it's like a short cameo. And Sneeko's talking to her. But you can tell from that short cameo of 20 minutes. Uh, maybe you guys have seen it. But there's, I think Sneeko was in Las Vegas. I think during maybe like a UFC fight or something and he bumps into academics and he's out with his girl and that short cameo of her being in Sneaker's IRL stream you could tell she's unhinged like that girl is legitimately crazy I think academics has to go and see somebody and he leaves her with Sneeko and she just starts like complaining where is he where's Ak where's Ak where's Ak where's Ak da, 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 da. and Sneeko's trying to reassure her don't worry he'll be back in a minute he's just gonna go and talk to whoever and then for a, a brief two minute period 
it kind of felt like she was like, you know, offering herself to sneak her a bit. So it went from her panicking and getting really, you know, having this like almost manic dependency breakdown thing. Then it quickly switched to her like trying to suck off Sneaker in a weird way. It was honestly so strange. I was looking, I was like, wow, boy, this woman is really like, and I'm not even meaning to be mean. Like she actually might have some mental health issues. Like I wouldn't be surprised, like legitimately must have some issues. She's shouting already. I'm like, yeah, bro, chill, but like, you know, we doing content anyway. Troy Ave, like, you know, he's calling anybody. Troy Ave don't, Troy Ave don't know what's going on. He calling everybody. Troy Ave then calls, um, calls Wack. Wack been online on, on No Jumper Show talking about, like, Blueface and fuck my girl. Now, some of you- <laughs> Blueface, that troll is always really good because for whatever, for whatever reason, I think it's worse in America. I don't think UK guys care that much. That's one thing, I, maybe because we're all heathens. But I think American dudes, no matter what race they are, seem to care a lot about who their girlfriend, wife has fucked before. It seems to be something that really bothers you guys over there. So Blueface trolling everybody by saying, I fucked your girl is funny because it gets everybody and it's also possible, <laughs> you know? It's entirely possible that he could have. So it's an expert troll because it, it could be a lie, but it's also possibly true. So I love that he just slipped that in there and academics has never been the same since. Y'all who watch me know who my but I think this also could be applied to Selena Powell, to be fair. He could be talking about her, um, Cheyenne or Selena Powell. Girl is. Like, like that's her. That, that would be the girl who, who would fit that mold or that title. But a lot of people really don't know who my girl is. Like, you know what I mean? Like, nigga, I'm not in a relationship type nigga like that. Some people actually think I'm... <laughs> I love how he acts like, honestly, the way he acts like he has choices is fucking hilarious. <laughs> I'm not relationship type of nigga like that. Yeah, I wonder why, brother. So date Selena, man. They get like, that's just really what it is. She over here, she now see what pop up on the joint. She going crazy, bad shit. Yo, what the fuck? So she like shouting at him, blah, blah, blah. Why can't even clarify to her like, yo, yo, let me, t let me tell you the reality. Like, yo. Blueface said he fucked Axe girl. I didn't say which girl, which is clear. This is like so easy and clear. He's basically saying, like, to me, I take it as it's just content. Blueface fucked my girl, but it's not it like whack himself is saying it's not the girl I'm with. I know Blueface said online, but it's not her, right? She's still wilding on me. I'm like, bro, like, yo, just chill out, my nigga. Like, bro, like, you could tell, like, Wack not even really on that. You, you want me to press him or some shit? Like, he not really on that. Any, anyway. Press him, lols. Long story do? short, she getting the feelings because now she's like, yo, you not going to press these niggas over me, this and third. Because, again, the main character. Look at what a woman will do to you, man. This woman's out here cheating on him with a million people, stealing his money, hitting his mum, and now she's pressing him to what? Fight Blueface and Wack 100 <laughs> to defend her honour. Yo, these women are fucking horrible, man. She wants him to defend her honor. It's crazy. Yo, big up, yo. Appreciate you. Thank you for the super chat, brother. I appreciate you. Or whoever you are, brother or sister. Thank you for that. Oh, my God. To syndrome. Shorty gonna send pictures or really, like, weird things of me to niggas like Adam22 and Troy Ave. She's like, oh, I'm going to show these niggas that really I'm your bitch and I got pictures of you that nobody would want to see. And I'm like, this is why I'm even here. It's like, yeah, bro, like, what type of girl would do that? Like, yours, obviously. Yours. Why are you surprised? This, this girl smashed, I remember she smashed an egg over his face. She's been belligerent in the background, just screaming random shit. She leaked this, the fact that he had like herpes, right? That was the same girl that leaked the pictures of him having herpes. She sent, she leaked a picture of her. There was a picture of her with a, so ratchet. There's a picture of her with the obvious black eye sucking academics' dick. I think that's her. And he, you see his belly and his little pee pee. It's like, it's, it's one of those pictures that you don't want to ever see again. Um, it's at least the pictures of him having all the pimples on the ingrowing hairs or pimples or whatever in his belly. Like, why are you? Uh, yeah. If me and you locked in and you my bitch and like, I've been giving you mad shit for two years. Why would you ever send a nigga some weird pictures of me big, or even do anything like that? But Big up all the man them in the stream chat who bust down a fucking, uh, <laughs> who bust down a crackhead. <laughs>
<laughs> Big up all my guys in the stream chat who've been down bad. <laughs> <laughs> that they bust down an actual crackhead like an actual legit crackhead like with like bruises everywhere <laughs> but then i realized i'm an idiot i'm a sucker i'm really like on some down bad shit for the story i'm finna tell you so this is a girl who's been trying to hold things against me because she really believes that i am so much in fear of these things getting out so first and foremost i'm gonna tell you all a few things okay and I could start with a bunch of things about me and her relationship, but, and I, I guess I can start, let, let me look at the child. No, let's just, let's fast forward. Come on. Let's just get I'll to tell you, I'm a victim. Nobody knows this story. <laughs> I'm a victim. Academics to being the victim. Imagine. This is hilarious. Also, keep in mind, keep in mind, academics was the guy that was hard on thoughts. Strange thing to talk about, to be fair, right? To be like a movement, hard on thoughts. It's a weird thing to even talk about. Strange. Like, why, why do thoughts need to be you know dealt with in a hard way like what are they doing are they trying to overthrow governments or like you know displace people from countries and shit like what's happening anyway he was a hard on thoughts guy he's very very vocal about other people's relationships and baby mothers and dramas and cheating and shit just listen how he just listen to what happens now listen to this part of the story listen listen story and he even i got my assistant sitting over there she don't know the story this is so much let's go let's go let's go Things that I care that much. Skip, 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 skip. By the way, everybody knows, especially because this is after my break and I had got 50 guns in my house. So really, when the police was coming, they were serving a search warrant. I'm going to tell you what it's all about. They were serving a search warrant. They know I got 50 guns. The town that I live in issued me 50 guns. I have them in my house. That's a fact. Oh, bad boy, huh? Fucking academics Rambo. 50 fucking blickies and you still got robbed of half a million dollars in cash by a fucking 25-year-old girl. Like, come on, brother. So when they're coming in, remember, they're serving a search warrant. They they, they got in their computer system. Then you got 50 guns. We got to come in a little bit. They knocking on the door, whatever, whatever. My mama, who's upstairs with my dog, and then I'm downstairs, like I'm playing Fortnite, some shit. My mama don't know what's going on. He's busting down these fucking thoughts with his mom in the house. God damn. They're asking her to open the door. My mama don't know. I remember the only thing my mama screamed out, she was like, like she called me Junior because I got my same name as my father. She said, Junior, get the gun. Because she think, she heard the story. This is after niggas try to break in. So she's telling me, Imagine yo, baby, like, Imagine having to rely on imagine having to rely on a day drunk academics to defend you with a gun. That's probably the worst thing, isn't it? Academics, as fat and un unathletic and uncoordinated as he is, having to defend you while he's drunk holding a gun. I'm all for uh I'm all for fucking uh, bearing arms and self protection and shit. But I don't think he should have guns. He maybe should have somebody in his house that has a gun. But should he have his own gun to operate when he's drunk all the time? It's probably not the best thing, innit? He probably might end up like, who's that guy? That, that fucking South African guy with the, without the legs that mistakenly shot his girlfriend. <laughs> he got released recently, right? That guy, right? Um, that could be one of those situations, academics, right? <laughs> God forbid, though, God forbid. Like, yo, I think niggas is coming again. Like, get the gun. It wasn't that. It was the cops. I'm downstairs. I always have a gun with me. Yeah, yeah. Oscar Pistorius. Academics Pistorius, bro. Bang, bang. In my house. I don't care. I sleep with a gun under my pillow. Every time I sleep with two guns. Anybody know Academic me? Academics John Wick. Academics John Wick in the chat. I go to my crib. There's guns galore. Cool. <laughs> I see it. Gotcha. And by the way, my, on my phone, it pops up. It pops up that the police is outside and I see him because I got secure. I got cameras everywhere. My mama don't know how to work the shit in my crib. Like this is my crib, nigga. She don't know how to work it like that. So I seen it. Anyway, <laughs> I put my gun away. Saying to your mom, this is my crib, nigga. It's fucking hilarious. But that's what happens, I guess, in African and Caribbean families. If you actually make enough money, you can actually get away with saying anything. Obviously, if you try to tell your mom, hey, this is my house, nigga, she'll definitely shoot you right now. But if you was to make, if you if you were making four to six million a year, and you retired your parents, you could probably say that to them. <laughs> you could probably tell your mom to shut the fuck up. 
way because I seen it was the police. By the time I walk upstairs, the police kicked my door down. By the way, these are expensive doors. I live in a mansion. It's a $2 million house. <laughs> regular doors. <laughs> Get out of here, you brokies with your regular doors. I've got those $200 million mansion doors, bro. You know what I mean? Them things are made out of what? What are they made out of? Uh, his, his doors are made by Eliante. <laughs> <laughs> Jacobs and Co. Doors, right? Is that what he's saying? Yeah, it's Johnny Dang Doors. <laughs> VVS Doors. These doors cost me $25,000. They kicked my door down. The reason they kicked it down, when they're telling and shouting for my mom to open the door, my mama don't open the door because she's like, what the fuck is going on? Bet. They come in, tell everybody to get down. We all get down. They put us in cuffs. By the way, Cheyenne is there too. And this is what she thinks is some shit that she can hold against. By the way, you see, I added that at the end there. He didn't say that. He added that at the end, by the way. In any other situation, if, if there, in any other walk of life, if the situation arises where a SWAT team police come to your house and arrest you because of something your girlfriend did at the time in front of your family, that would be the end of that relationship, right? You know that. Your mom will be bad mouthing the girl. Your dad will be bad mouthing them, the family, right? It would be a stain on your relationship and it would probably result in you guys breaking up or it being irreversibly bad. But for somehow, this wasn't a red, this wasn't a red flag to him. This is not normal. Normal people don't just get raided by the police <laughs> with their girlfriend and mom in their house. It's not a normal occurrence. The fact that he didn't see this as a red flag is really concerning me they put everybody in cuffs i'm in cuffs even my mama is in cuffs we're all sitting there what's going on, on i'm like i'm still wondering like what's going on i'm like yo what's up with y'all like what's good <laughs> police officer what's up with y'all what's good it's big act come on man it's big act <laughs> uh, subscribe come on man it's big act nobody tells me nothing Anyway, they asked me if I want to go down to the station. I'm like, I still, I really have no idea what's going on. I do go down to the station. Bro, I go down to the station and I get, I, I get kind of really what they're doing. Okay. So I'm going to make a long story short, but this Please. is the reason why my house got raided. Please do. And this is, this is going to be a lesson to all y'all. If y'all watch me and y'all watch me talk about. This is not a lesson that we need to learn though. This is the thing that I think he's not understanding. He thinks he's some sort of like. Um, honest truth bearer or something right that he's making the mistakes so people don't have to know no normal person would ever get themselves in the situation that he's in there are so many red flags ahead of the situation that got crazy no there's, there were so many red flags before it got really really crazy that most people would have taken notice taken heed and made a course correction you don't need it to go to the lengths of her stealing fucking money and all this sort of shit you would have seen the signs okay this person's unhinged it's gonna be crazy it's toxic and then obviously averted course the fact that he let it get to this end is not a commendable thing at all zero he's trying to excuse his naivete his ignorance um his insecurities his lack of experience with women he's trying to excuse all of that in this sort of like blanket term of like yeah look this is a lesson that i did something bad so that you can learn from it it's like nah brother no most people wouldn't do this all these stories is a ranger large slash fat one gunman slash slash big ak <laughs> that's, that's a fat, fat man. man exactly big up nj ranger <laughs> big up nj ranger appreciate you brother a big up big up big up big up been trying to give y'all these insights without telling y'all that i've been through some shit they raided my house no 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 young old vibes cheyenne versus bgl oh my god can you imagine can you imagine cheyenne and bgl face to face ig live <gasps> yo i'm locked in i'm fucking locked in because I, so there was a woman that came to my house that woman claimed she was sexually assaulted not by me by other people but it happened in my house i'm gonna tell you why they raided my house shorty fucking hell 
now. <laughs> Nigga, women are getting raped in your crib. Your girlfriend is abusing you in your crib, robbing you of money. Damn. I should even tell a whole full story. Let me just tell a full story. Please. Let me tell a full story. Okay, skip. Come on, let's get to this. Get to it. Today and my nigga Adrian uh um Antonio Brown invited me to a pool party. That's the first red flag. The first red flag would be Antonio Brown inviting you to a pool party. If you go to an Antonio Brown pool party, you should expect the worst because of how he is, right? He's a little bit unhinged. He might be suffering from the CTE himself. You should make adjustments to your night and you should maybe tell yourself, hey, I'm going to enjoy what I'm going to enjoy at his pool party, but I'm not going to take any of that shit back home with me because whoever you meet at an Antonio Brown pool party, best believe you probably wouldn't want to invite them back to your house. Just, just, you know, just something I'm throwing out there. If you was to go to an Antonio Brown pool party, I'm pretty sure whoever you met there, you might want to do your business there, but you probably wouldn't want to bring them back to your house where you actually sleep at and where your mum visits you. Probably not. But what do I know? I tell my niggas to even drive my cars. I say, yo, drive my car. I'm about to get drunk. That's how you know I'm definitely about to get drunk because I'm like, yo, I'm telling niggas to drive my car. Ooh, I'm going to get drunk. This guy is a fucking loser, isn't it? Come on, academics, bro. I'm going to get drunk. <laughs> I'm going to have sex tonight. <laughs> Come on, bro. Grow up. Why is he like this? Why is he fucking like this, man? Anyway, I go to the party. Um, It's like a day party type shit. Antonio Brown, we there. He performing, blah, blah, blah. I'm, I'm already drunk. There's a girl texting me that I haven't seen in a year. She says she want to come through. Cool, I said, whatever, whatever, whatever. Yo, we're going to leave the party around eight, blah, blah, blah. Does that, you can come through, I'm going to send you a lift. I swear, I got so drunk. By the time I leave the party, I my niggas drove me home. Or I think we went to Wendy's and we went home. By the time... Being academic's friend must be nice as well, isn't it? You get to hang out and he's a big mansion. You get to fucking flex and bring girls there to smash. You get to drive his expensive cars because he's always drunk. He buys you food and shit. He probably gives him loads of money. And because he's a bit, you know, losery and corny looking, you would imagine he probably struggles to make friends anyway, especially IRL friends. So he's just happy to have people around. But I, I bet you some of those friends take the piss. I bet you. I bet you there's a bit of um, clever manipulation going on there where it's very one way, where whenever they go out to eat, he probably, academics always has to pay the bill. Whenever they're going out to drink, he obviously covers the tab. I bet you that's the thing. I bet you he probably gets exploited and taken advantage of by his homies more so than women in his life, but he doesn't even notice it. I bet you. I bet you the men in his life run his pockets way more than the women in his life. That's a really sad thing about it. Like they probably, you know, and he doesn't mind because he likes the company because he doesn't want to be alone. But, they obviously get the better side of it because they get to freeload off of him. So imagine those people that freeload off of you, the way they thank you is by allegedly sexually assaulting somebody in your house. Those are not your friends. I'm so fucking drunk. When I get home, I go to my, I, go, I walk, and I am swear this is a whole story. I promise you, I can't lie. This is why I, I can't lie. I'm Jesus Christ. I can't believe a bitch I really laid with and I really trust and I bought everything in the fucking world would ever even try to play with me like this. You see what he's saying here? He's equating buying something, buying things for people as a form of gaining their loyalty. That says everything that you want to know about Ak and his current mindset and where he's at in life. He thinks if he buys people things, that buys them their loyalty to them, which is crazy, to be honest. Especially when you know, it equates to such serious accusations as what the girl is alleging, rape and sexual assault and shit. Why would the fact that you bought me things, you know, absolve you from being accused of something like that, especially if it happened? Who knows if it happened or not? No one knows. We weren't there. But equating loyalty with money and gifts and stuff is so sad. 
Cause she, I've told her the story because low key, yes, that was me cheating on her. Like me and her fell out. She went back home and I went to a party and I hit up another bitch. Yes, the other chick came over. I'm mad drunk. Yo, I'm drunk at a party. I come home. Yo, I'm so drunk. I'm, I'm, I ain't drive my own car. Imagine smashing academics drunk. Imagine academics is hot, heavy, sweaty body trying to smash you while he's drunk. Dick or limp, smelling of whatever he drinks. I don't know what is his favorite drink. Is it Casamigos or something? Imagine what that experience must be like for the women. Part of me thinks these women deserve the money. Is that bad to say? Part of me thinks these women deserve the money that they scanned him out because, you know, imagine laying up with this guy when he's drunk and whatever. The state of him. Imagine. Imagine hearing him, <laughs> hearing him breathing in your ear, <laughs> and you and, and he seems to have a thing for like young girls as well. So imagine you're like under twenty five, and you've got this guy on top, <laughs> this guy on top of you. Just, <laughs> I think you deserve the money. You deserve whatever money you get. <laughs> I walk upstairs to where my master bedroom's at and I fall out. This one, uh, y'all gonna see what the lesson is in this. Yo, I the lesson is don't go to Antonio Brown's fucking pool party and try to smash girls or try to bring girls there back home. And the other lesson is don't get super drunk where you're passing out and you have no idea what's going on in around you. I just pass out. I but you learn that when you're fucking 16. You learn how to control your drink, how to hold your liquor, how to fucking maneuver outside when you're fucking 16. This might also be proof that he hasn't really <laughs> been outside like that. You know, this is kind of sad. Like, come on, bro. Getting passed out drunk in your mid 30s is a little bit redacted. No, it's kind of cool. Late 20s and shit, mid 20s, teens. But when you're in your mid 30s and you're, you're getting blackout drunk, Especially when you're a content creator. I think it's different when you're a dude that... When you've got a regular nine to five, I swear to God, this is a really toxic opinion and very destructive. But I honestly think it's perfectly fine to be a functioning alcoholic and drug addict if you've got a regular nine to five and a family, right? You fucking hate your job. Part of you hates your family and the fact that they've kind of, you know, um, they're like your fucking anchor and you can't really do the things that you like. So you kind of, to release yourself, you go to the pub, you get drunk and you do loads of drugs and you function, right? Day to day on that. I think that's perfectly okay. I'm not going to lie. I think that's perfectly, okay. especially if you can manage it and you don't lose your house. You don't put your family's future in jeopardy. You don't fuck up your kid's school or whatever. I think it's okay. When you're, when you're like your own, when you're like a, business person content creator entrepreneur type person and you have all the time in the world getting blackout drunk is a bit lame you should be using the time that you've been given you know a bit more wisely you should be doing more with the time that you've been given with the gift with this kind of you know treasure you've been given where you can kind of call your own shots and shit you should be doing more of it than getting blackout drunk i think blackout drunk should only be reserved for us regular civilians who have regular jobs if you're a content creator and stuff getting blacked out and being high all the time is very unbecoming toxic i know but that's my opinion i forgot i ubered a bitch to my crib i forgot that i'm drunk my nigga, 4 a.m. comes. Remember, I'm, I'm at my crib at 9. 4 a.m. comes. I'm knocked out. 4 a.m. comes. My homie, I never see the girl. I never see her. My homies wake me up on some shit like, yo, act. We leaving. <laughs> they woke him up at 4 a.m. I'm sorry, but if you get back from a pool party, let's say at 1, and your friends then wake you up to say they left at 4, and you invite the girl back home, you should be able to put two and two together of why they're leaving so quickly. <laughs> you should be able to put two and two together. If your friends who usually stay over your house all day, all weekend, are suddenly leaving at four, right? Like a sneaky link. There's a reason why. I'm like, oh shit, damn. I was fucked. Like, damn, I'm fucked up type shit. Like, yo, I've been sleeping. They're like, yo, lock the door because we're leaving. I said, damn, y'all leaving? They're leaving at like 4 or 5 a.m. I bet. 
I go and I go lock the door. Then they say to me when I'm locking the door, they say, oh, by the way, that girl you invited, yo, she down there. Oh, by the way, you know, his homies are fucking horrible. Oh, by the way, that girl you invited. And the other end of your house in the guest bedroom. I look at them and I said, what girl I invited? They said, bro, remember you invited a girl. Nigga, I'm so confused because I was at the party with, with Antonio Brown, nigga. I'm macking it, nigga. Like, got all these bitches, they on me and shit, type shit. I'm like, please. <laughs> I'm macking it, all these bitches are on me. Honestly, bro. Oh. Women are amazing, innit? Women are really amazing. Women's ability to make a dude like academics feel like a king is a, like, they have an ability to make men feel like kings by just lowering their guard, giggling at your shit jokes, playing with their hair, fiddling around with their necklace, looking at your lips and shit. And you really believe that they like you. <laughs> it's like, no, they don't. They want a G-Wagon. They want a fucking Birkin. <laughs> You're thinking they fucking, yeah, I'm that fucking nigga. I'm that guy. For once you walk into a club, you're like, so this is what it must feel like to be Chris Brown. This is what it must feel like to be David Beckham. This is what it must feel like to be Brad Pitt. It's like, nah, bro. They just see a walking fucking ATM. But again, like that's a talent. A woman's ability to make you believe that they actually like you for you. It's just marvelous. But them bitches was ugly. No, no disrespect. I'm just telling you how the story out with this. I'm like, no way I invited one of them girls at the party back to my crib. Them girls was bust. No way. They was like, no nigga, remember the girl you, I said, what are you talking about? They said, yo, you know so-and-so and they describe myself. Oh shit. Anyway, they leave. I go, I, I walk down the hallway. I walk down the hallway. <laughs> look at this bit of the story. Now, now he's starting to like start. I, look, I walk down the hallway. So they leave at 4 a.m. He then walks down the hallway to go and see this girl that he forgot about, who's apparently asleep. Nigga, I'm a, uh, by the way, for shorty who thought she was going to hold us against me, I'm going to always tell the truth that I don't care what nobody says. And by the way, what I'm going to tell y'all is something that could happen to any nigga. And nope. Not true. Not true. I don't, I can't think of many guys who have been in situations where they forget that they invited somebody over to their house and they wake up and that person's in their home. They, you know, maybe you might forget the, the fucking initial interaction, but you remember the hookup. But rarely have I heard a story of somebody inviting somebody to their home, then being in their home for hours and forgetting. That is more so on you for being sloppy and being too wasted and shit and not being in control of your fucking, you know, of yourself. That isn't something that every guy should hold as a lesson. That's not true at all, man. And by the way, yeah, I know what y'all gonna say to me. Like, I should be my homies and shit like that. I'm a sucker for that too. We will no, yeah, the, the 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 homies, those are not your friends. By the way, I think he knows this, but again, I think unfortunately for act like a lot of dudes out there, I think we all can be honest enough to say that finding male friends is really difficult, especially over the age of 21. If you don't play organized sports, it's almost impossible to meet new male friends especially if you stay in a job for a long time, you don't move jobs, you don't move houses and shit. Where else are you going to meet other guys that you might end up becoming friends with? So it's no surprise that a lot of dudes sometimes with money, especially people like Ike, can be put in situations like this where they get taken advantage of by people they think are friends because they just want some company because they don't want to be alone because it's all well and good being super rich and having all the time in the world to do what you want. But not having friends and people to enjoy it with is a bit shit, you know? Um, who wants to be at a club on their own or, you know, at a table in Miami on their own, right? It's better when you're with your dudes and you're popping bottles and shit. So that's one of the things. But I think because of that, there is also ample opportunity to be exploited and to be taken advantage of. So always watch your, you know, always scan your shoulders like fucking Prime Zavi. We'll talk about it. Anyway, so I go down the hallway to my guest bedroom. And I see the girl and I said, oh shit. But I noticed this couple things. First of all, she naked. Second of all, her hair is like, like frizzy and shit like that. This is the summertime. <laughs> like almost like she kind of went in the pool type shit. I got a pool, like it's a big ass pool. <laughs> she was naked and her hair is frizzy. <laughs> uh, 
No, nah, she was just doing burpees in her room. That's it. She was just doing burpees. She was just doing some some body weight exercises in her room while you were asleep to keep herself occupied. <laughs> that was the reason. Anyway, I'm like, yo, what's good with you? Like, I'm waking her up. Type shit. I'm like, yo, you sleeping? Like, what's up? Anyway, I go downstairs. She kind of... I love how he skirted over that bit. So allegedly, he just said, what's up? She was still sleeping and he just left. He walked in. He wakes up. Hung over. Probably a little bit horny. Realizes there's a girl in his house. Oh my god, that's a. It's like finding a fucking five pound note, right, in your pocket of your fucking jeans or something. Oh shit! Look, ten pounds. He's he walks in, sees this girl allegedly naked, and he just like says, "Hey," and then walks out. Are you awake? And then walks off. Extra doubt. Realize I'm there. She wakes up. She come downstairs. She was telling me about some other shit she wanted to get me with. Like, this is before I was really on Afrobeast. Like, I don't want to dox her neither because she ain't, she, she know what it is. She ain't never say no weird shit. This is why it's so crazy that this is the girl that I've been, and I really, I think it's because she mad because I cheated on her type shit. It's her trying to use this against me. It's not the girl that was really in it. So anyway, that girl woke up. And by the way, you know, I hate to tell this part because it's going to make her look crazy. And that's why I would, I, I refuse to give out that girl's name. Okay. So she um so it's a nighttime, whatever, whatever. Um I remember saying See the all the bits he's missing out, he's purposely skipping. All these mm, mm, there's a lot of omissions there, a lot of details we're not getting in this story. A lot of details. So keep that in mind. Like, damn, what was y'all doing when I was sleeping type shit? She was like, Oh shit, now nah, we were just having fun, blah 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 blah. Now granted, this is a girl who I've been dealing with for a couple of years. I've messed with her for years. Um when she came over that time, she had told me she was like a dancer, some shit like that. You know what I mean? And I remember, and I don't know if maybe my niggas took it the wrong way, because I remember she had told me she was like, yo, the girl you used to know, like I'm on my like I'm on some bad girl vibes now, type shit. Like basically she be like doing her thing. And I remember I told him, I'm like, yo. If you're having conversations with a woman and she says I'm on my bad girl vibes now, and your ax age, you probably need to take a long, hard look in the mirror as the type of woman you're talking to. If you have a woman that ever speaks to you in this way and you're at his age, you probably need to age up. You probably need to bump up who you're dating because that is hella cringe and hella corny. I'm on some bad... What? She might as well have said I'm on my city girl shit or something. Like, ugh. She's, a, she, she's what, a literal child? God damn it, this story gets worse and worse. Oh, this is before when I was going to the party. I was like, yo, I'm about to get this girl coming over later for me. But she, she tell me she on some different vibes. I don't know if that's what they took. And, and, and I can't really speak to other niggas thing. I can only speak to myself. All right, bet. Cool. We're in the morning now. We're in the morning. And once the morning happened, and I remember even that night, like that night when she woke up, I went low in my backyard and I'm like, something don't look right back here. I'm like, yo, what's up? Like, what was y'all doing when I was sleeping type shit? Because I know. <laughs> he went in his backyard. He was just slipping on semen like Rocky in that jail, right? He started slipping on fucking semen. He's like, what the fuck's going on? What's all this Vaseline on the floor? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, like if you nigga i live in my crib dolo nigga like don't get no ideas but dolo nigga like nigga i know when my i know the the chair the tan is right there i know this is right there and i'm like i go in the back i'm like why this is over there why this is over there this shit don't make no sense so i i asked her yo they were swinging this girl around in it while he was sleeping snoring with his fucking casamigo breath his homies were absolutely swinging that girl around like a fucking rag doll <laughs> and he couldn't figure it out until he watched the cctv that's what makes it funny he couldn't just piece it together looking at her the the sheepish way his friends left so quickly after they came back from the club her disheveled looks right he couldn't just piece it together quickly he had to watch the cctv footage he was so in denial <laughs> the fucking you know the coom covered fucking pool area wasn't an indication of what happened at all the panties on the top on the fucking f flower pot <laughs> you couldn't figure it out and she was like nah we were just having fun type shit that's what she told me tonight in the morning 
I got to let my dog out. So I go let Pluto out. And when I go let Pluto out, I'm now outside stand. I'm like looking around. I'm like, man, this shit don't look right. Here's the thing. I got cameras everywhere in my crib. And this is this is the reason why y'all don't realize the raid. Yeah, this is the raid. The cameras. And this is like, I'm telling y'all now that y'all can hear the whole story. But so now I'm sitting there. This is the morning. I'm looking around I'm like, what the fuck? I know my backyard. Something ain't right. She's telling me they were just chilling, having fun, waiting for me type shit. But I'm sleeping and I'm sleep from like 9, 8, 9 p.m. since I got in the crib. And they don't wake me up till 4 a.m. That's how many hours? Seven hours. OK. Anyway, <laughs> remember for, when she told me the night before, I'm believing it. But the day, but, but in the morning, I'm looking around when I'm in Pluto. I'm like, son, don't sound right. I go on my, I, I go on my, I go on my, my, my camera. I go to my, my, my DVR. I, I'm looking what's going on. Gang, this is facts. And I'm not trying to make her look crazy. And I'm not trying to put her in no type of weird position. This is reality. Brother, this is a girl who I've been dealing with for like two years on and off. We not steadily, like we, we were like, you know, hang out, hang out, hang out. Not really hang out, hang out, hang out, hang out. Not really hang out. That type of shit. You feel me? She ain't, she, she's actually a, like a really good girl like she's a girl who kind of gives like really nice energy like not one of them like sexy red type children's like not to disrespect her either fuck no what did she do when i look at my camera in the morning gang the shorty was getting like i, I don't even i don't even like the, the, she was getting trained by my two mans like <laughs> Honestly, I swear to God, any other guy with a brain would have been able to piece this story together from the moment you saw her. He only saw, he only realized what happened when he saw the CCTV footage. He was so in denial. He was so in love, so wrapped up in this idea that because he buys this girl things, right? And because she's, he's laid up with her, that she wouldn't betray him like that. It's like, bro, like, what did you expect would happen? You came back from a party, liquored up in a big mansion, and you left your two friends alone with some random girl that you hook up with from time to time. What did you think would happen? Honestly, <laughs> decent dude, decent guys w would have not done anything, right? They're actually your friends, and they know that's your situation. Even if it's not a girlfriend, they wouldn't have touched her anyway. But if these guys are paid homies, right? They're like clout homies. All bets are off. Anything is possible. So the fact that he only realized it watched CCTV footage is super sad, man. On my pool deck the night before when I'm sleeping, I'm dead ass. This is what happened. Nigga, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, what? Nigga, I invited you over here. I paid a lift. The lift was like 200 bucks. Nigga, she lived. I don't even want to say where she lived. I'm like, what? 200 pounds lift. Two hundred pounds. Wow. Wow. What? How could you come to my joint and get trained by my man's while I'm sleeping? Now, this is where I'm gonna be honest with you, men. Y'all gonna learn this lesson from me. And, and, and it's I, I hate when he keeps doing this. We don't need to learn lessons from me, brother. Most people don't get themselves in these type of situations, even if you don't have money. Most people don't get themselves in these type of situations, even if you don't have money. We, like this is so easily avoidable like the fact that he thinks this is like a teachable moment for men is just insane this is more of a wake-up call for you this is sincere men i want you to learn this lesson for me and i will say this and tears might come in my eye when i say this to you you could get penalized for being a good guy i never knew nothing was ever going on i was sleeping i was sleeping so when i seen this shit I'm kind of offended. I'm like, damn. Like, I sent the shit for you to come here. Why'd you? Okay, bet. I ain't say nothing to her first. We then go upstairs to my kitchen. And she's still acting like ain't nothing happened. So I'm kind of throwing a little hints in there. I'm like, yo. I'm like, damn. I'm like, y'all can't believe y'all ain't wake me up type of shit last night. Like, what, what happened? Well, you went to join in. He went to, he wanted to go, he wanted to fucking triple team this girl with his homies. Is Ak more upset that 
his homie smashed without him or that they smashed her at all? Then, you know what I mean? She was like, nah, we were just having fun, blah, 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 blah. And now I'm feeling disrespected because I'm like, yo, does she not know that I, I seen this shit? Like, but so, so I asked her one question and this is facts, facts, my nigga. I said, do you know, I, I said, any, everything you did last night, right? I said, you wanted to do, right? Because, you know, j just off like, because she's acting like nothing happened. And I'm like, everything you wanted to do, right? And she said, Yo, Big Up Uncle Podcast, Agostino can get a Christmas present from Mike if he send him his Amazon wish list. He made a red bar in the wild segment. Oh, that's nice for him. Um, I'll politely decline, though. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't need any gifts, but I'm a big fan of Red Bar, so big up him for that offer. Um, but yeah, big up Red Bar. Um, he, she should um, bless his fans. Maybe substitute my gift to a fan or something. I'm, I'm okay. But big up Red Bar. Big up you, Uncle Podcast. Big up you. To me, yeah, I had fun. Everything was cool. I, I'm a little tight. And by the way, y'all, yeah, some of y'all gonna hear the story and be like, "Act you cause this on yourself," because. Maybe y'all can say tender dick or whatever because I could just said nothing and I would have never been in these problems because sometimes when a girl no 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 it's not about not saying nothing again he's not realizing what's happening the first mistake you made was going to an Antonio Brown pool party in the first place randomly right if you're going somewhere like that you plan it ahead of time you know what you you know you having a plan of attack for lack of a better term you hit what you need to hit over there and you just leave and you go home you don't bring back anything from that party to your house. There's obviously other mistake that you made was getting too blasted that you don't remember anything and that you fell asleep and left your homies alone with this girl that you invited that you forgot she was in the house with. That's mistakes that you made that most guys wouldn't make those type of mistakes. Um, so it isn't really, you know, that much of a teachable moment when the moments that are meant to be teachable are a bit common sensey, you know? Well, it's intoxicated or whatever she is, bro, sometimes it's you shaming her that calls her to do some shit, nigga. So... She's like, nah, everything is cool. But I'm feeling the way because I'm like, really came to my crib and just fuck my niggas and really think I don't know type shit. Like, so I said, I said, I said, damn. I said, I ain't gonna lie to you, man. I'm like, yo, y'all made a motion video last night, man. I, in reality, I said, y'all got a whole video of, of, of whatever happened. And she was like, what are you talking about? She's, I, I still think she playing dumb. I'm like, I said, bruh. You know, it's all good. I ain't even tripping. I'm like, I'm just trying to make sure, yo, you good, whatever you did last night. And, you know, I ain't think you was that type of girl, but fuck it. It's cool. She was like, why are you acting like that? Because now I'm acting distant. She's like, yo, why are you acting like that? I'm like. <laughs> why was he beating around the bush? Some, like, if this happened, this shows that he had feelings for the girl and he was probably not admitting it to himself, innit? Because if you're annoyed, why is he beating around the bush about this for so long? Why don't you just ask her flat out? Hey, what happened last night, man? Did you did, did, did you fuck my friends? Oh, I saw the video, man. What happened? Just straight up. Why is he beating around the bush? Why is he acting so coy and so shy about it? And so awkward. Strange, isn't it? It must mean that he probably had feelings for her, but he didn't admit it to himself. And obviously when his homie smashed her, he was like heartbroken. <laughs> Honestly, man, I feel for him so much. That must have been brutal. Watching that CCTV footage of his friends double teaming his fucking link that he had secret feelings for is wild. I'm, I'm getting mad now because now I'm thinking like, yo, you're playing with me. You're acting like I don't know. You're acting like, bro, this is my house. I told, I tell everybody when they come to my house, every video, every audio is recorded. Think I got more cameras in my house than the motherfucking casino, bro. So I'm like, all right, bet. So I, I tell him, like, yo, really? I'm like, yo, it's is that a bit freaky? Or is he exaggerating about the cameras and the audio recordings? It's a bit, it's giving KGB, isn't it? It's giving CIA. It's giving Big Brother. It's giving Lil Act Freak Offs. You know, like, why is everything recorded, sir? And what parts of the house aren't, you know, don't have video recording systems? Like, I don't know. It's, it's not the it's not the best place to hang out. Like if I want to go to a place to kick it, right? If I want to go to a kick, a, a, what, what do you call them in, in? We call them in the UK afters. I think in the U US you call them kickbacks. I don't think the good place to go back to a kickback is a place where you know there's cameras everywhere. 
you know the the first thing you do when you go to a kickback is you close the blinds <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> you know if you know you know so imagine going to somebody's kickback and they've got little red dots in every corner it's like and audio recordings not just video audio what 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 the fuck are you dis who are you meeting at your house like <laughs> warlords or something like what what is going on man it's cool bro like i see you fuck my niggas type shit she said nah I never fuck your niggas really bro you did no i didn't she was like i ain't gonna lie like i probably got naked and like twerk for them but i ain't never fuck them Already I'm thinking like, I know you lying now because you're admitting to get, first of all, why would you even get naked for my niggas? <laughs> if you came for me, you don't know them niggas. Can't. Whatever, cool. I bet. So I show her, I'm like, yo, bro, you don't got to lie to me. It's cool. Like, I get it. Like, we, like, this is the first time I've seen her like in a year. I said, you don't got to even lie to me. Nigga, I even show, I show her on my phone. I said, bro, look right there. She got another excuse. She said, oh, nah. So it was a video of her naked in my pool, bent over by the, the, the deck. And then one of my niggas got his dick out. Like, pause. I'm sorry. I've got to give you all the details. But I keep telling you, somebody can't ever put dirt on my name without me telling the truth. There's telling you the truth. And there's just this. We know, like, this is maybe another example of people that are, like, sexually inexperienced. He's describing a story where his homies smashed his link, his sneaky link, that he obviously had more feelings for than just a sneaky link. We know they smashed you and you had the footage. You don't need to describe it in graphic detail what happened in the video. This is like, do you remember that saying or that phrase or that thing people say where they're like, oh, you know a guy is like um, um, repressing their sexuality and like, you know, maybe afraid of coming out as gay or something when they're overly descriptive describing their sexual encounters or things they want to do with women right because normal guys don't really talk really in graphic detail about girls that they're hooking up with to their friends some dudes there are some freaks like that in your friendship but most regular dudes don't just sit around and talk about oh yeah i fucking push my piece in the back of my fucking wife's throat right no one does that really you just keep the so you just keep that stuff to yourself but when guys are like trying to you know maybe suppress their um own um sexuality or maybe haven't come to terms with it or when dudes are really inexperienced they usually go above and beyond to describe details that probably aren't necessary to the betterment of the story you know it's just like we know your homies smashed the girl that you brought back home for yourself i know it's crushing it hurts it's a betrayal but you don't need to describe in graphic detail the positions that they were in. We get it. <laughs> but maybe this is him trying to come to terms with it, you know? I don't know. So I said, bro, like, look at this right here. She was like, uh, uh, like, at first, she was like, uh, uh, yeah, he might have took his dick out. Like, I think he rubbed his dick on my pussy, but I never, I'm like, yo, bro, you really lying to me right now. So I ain't even gonna hold you, nigga. I scrolled in the video, nigga. I got the video in my shit. I scrolled in, I said, bro, here's a video of him fucking you. Then I scrolled again. I said, here's a video of him fucking you and you sucking off my other mans. Oh, what, what? Now, now the, now the story changed. The story now becomes, uh, oh, oh, what? Oh, I didn't know that. But she apologetic. She's like, yo, you gotta believe me. Like, yo, I like I would have never did that. Like, yo, shit, I'm so sorry. I would have never disrespected you like that. Like, yo, I came here for you. This and third. Anyway, my mama had to come that day. Like on some real shit. I ain't even Jesus Christ. The icing on the top of the cake. All this happens, and the next day his mom's meant to visit his house. Most dudes would get up to their dirt or their slime ship a couple of days before. But this guy was going to have his mum walk into a house, you know, full of sex smells and liquor and men the next day. <laughs> Holy shit, bro. It's proof. You know, if you're from black, if you're, if you're from the black community, if you make money, you can get away with anything, really, because what a way to receive your parents. God almighty. Bullshit. My mama was coming to my crib. So it's not only like, usually when that girl comes to my crib, she stays a couple days. Like I ain't even bullshit. She usually 
come stay a couple days, bring clothes. Ooh. But my mama was coming that day, so it wasn't because I was salty. And you know, if y'all don't believe that, y'all believe that. But that's really what it was. So I told her, I'm like, bro, I ain't gonna lie, yo, you gotta go, yo. So she's looking at me like, damn. And she said this. She said, damn, yo, you mad cold with me right now. She's like, usually you get me breakfast and shit. Like, why are you so cold? And I'm like, what's good, nah, my what's mama? Good? Got, what's good, my guy? Go. What's good? What's good? In here, like, yo, you gotta go, bro. She's automatically like looking at me like, oh shit. Oh, you really thinking? So she's apologizing like, yo, I t t believe me, I'm not that type of girl, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, and, and we're going to get to the raid. I call her car. She leaves. She calls me in the car. She says, yo, I'm sorry. I don't want you ever think I'm that type of girl. I came there to hang out with you. Like, and she even said this verbatim. Why would I come there and fuck your friends and not you? Like... <laughs> This woman is on all fours with his homies on 4K and she's still managing to fucking play with this guy's head. He just must be the easiest sucker to fall in it, really. God almighty. Why are they even still having conversations on the phone at that point? It's like, it is what it is. It happened. Move on. Why would I come there and fuck them instead of fucking you? Like, like come on, like, does it make sense? Like, now... This is her apologizing. Cool. When she gets home, and I'm going to be honest with you, this is the, I think, I promise, I, I honestly, to this day, I, st I still think I fucked up by doing this. Because I'm shaming her now. I'm shaming her. I said to her, I said, yo, I'm going to keep it up being with you, bro. And you came to my house and had two niggas just fuck you raw. I ain't seen no condom, no none. I told her, I said, yo, you should go get tested, man. Like, you done, I said, <laughs> Why is he talking like that for? Is he trying to act like Blueface? And is this not proof? Is this not proof that most likely Academics' large majority of experience with women has come in the last two years since he's been a popular content creator? Because I just noticed like his overuse of fucking, his overuse of, you know, his tendency to overly described sexual acts and stuff it's giving like it's giving horn dog it's giving perfect but it's also giving in like inexperience like everything is just so exciting you know it's describing in graph like even though he was heartbroken that he saw that footage i won't be surprised if he kind of got a little bit hard seeing that footage of his friends busting open his fucking girl you know it's really odd and even this bit here he tried to shame her at the end like so you have more of an issue with the girl than your homies. Again, in the in the hierarchy of blame, they both probably occupy joint first. But I would probably feel more betrayed by my friend than this sneaky link that I've known for two years only. Yes, she should probably have some loyalty to me because I invited her to my house. I paid for her Uber, whatever. It doesn't entitle you to have sex with her. Don't get me wrong. But just in terms of loyalty to me as a person hey if you're not going to offer it up to me then don't just fuck my homies you know what i mean that's okay request to have or expectation but to put all the blame and to put all the mind games and to try and shame the girl and not lose your rag at your friends who didn't tell you again smash this girl behind your back didn't tell you um ran away from the scene of the murder and you haven't confronted him till this day, probably, I don't think so. That's a bit odd, you know? That's a little bit strange. But again, I won't be surprised, like I said, that most likely Ak has probably got exploited by his male friends way more than the girls he's hooked up with. They probably take more advantage of him, for sure. And he doesn't realise it because, or he doesn't really care or turns a blind eye because he just wants friends. Yeah, that's why, yo, you should go get tested, bro. And from that moment... She started like because she the denial shifted and she kept like trying to like pivot on the denial to yo nah send me the video. Yo, I'm pretty sure I didn't fuck him. And I'm like, bro, you fucked him. And she was like, no, 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 look again. And I, now I'm getting super tight because I'm like, bro, I'm not exactly, exactly Sarlux. It's a long time between 9 p.m. tequila and 4 a.m. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. I'm about to watch this video of you getting fucked, my nigga. Like, it's on my surveillance. Like, bro, like, I was fucking with you. Like, what? You want me to watch the video of you getting fucked? You probably watched it a few times. 
I bet you if you were to get up that watch counter for that clip, it's probably in the hundreds. Cool. She keeps saying that, whatever, whatever. She then tells me, by the way, I ain't gonna lie, and I'm gonna keep it a being about everything. My homies did not tell me they fucked her. At that point, I only seen on my security cam. My homies did not tell. Remember, they woke me up that night. Yo, let let us out. Let's let us out the crib, uh, or lock the crib. They did not tell me they fucked the bitch that came for me. They never told me that. You know when when that conversation happened. Shorty now says to me, Shorty now says to me. Um, yo, I'm gonna keep it keep it a bean with you. Like, I really don't believe I would really do that. I'm not that type of person. Yo, you're right. I should go get tested. Remember, I, I told her to get tested, right? I think, and that's why I said, like, maybe I fucked up by, like, because now I'm making her seem nasty, right? Like, yo, go get tested. What the fuck? She said, yeah, I'm gonna get tested. And, yo, you know, I'm gonna get a rape kit. I tell her, I'm like, nigga, I'm like, yo, yo, get a rape kit. Like, so good. Like, yo, whatever. I said, whatever you got going, but she keep. So he shamed her to the point where she felt like her only her only way to kind of defend her honor was to then accuse her friends, his friends of raping her. So Act not only has terrible friends, he's also a terrible friend. <laughs> because surely there's a part of you that thinks if you did see CCTV footage of your girl that you were hooking up with smashing your friends, maybe you just keep it to yourself to save your friends from any situation you just kind of leave it you kind of pretend it never happened let the girl go in a way and kind of sweep it under the rug you might if you're again it's, it's a bit devilish it's a bit dark but that's what you may do the fact that he pushed this girl to the point where she wanted to defend herself and to defend herself she's now accusing her his friends of rape is wild but i'm also liking that he's not mentioning the fact that she's also accused him of rape. That's the thing he's admitting in this story, which is very interesting. Again, when you listen to people tell these type of stories, the bits that they leave out is always odd. There's many gaps, many jumps in time that don't make sense. So if, if that girl's accusing your friends of rape, why wouldn't it extend to you if you allegedly tried to wake her up in the night when she was sleeping? You know, Again, who knows what happened, but... Again, this is all his fault from the beginning. Went out of his house, lastminute.com to an Antonio Brown pool party. And instead of just hitting whatever was there, dealing with it at the pool party, that's what pool party is for. You get up to what you get up to over there and then you come back home. You try to bring back something there and look what happened. So again, extreme ownership type of person, Joko Wernick book, make sure you buy it. I think this is all of his fault personally. Asking me like, yo, could, like, are you sure what happened after this? How did both of the guys get there instead of one? Because I remember talking to him, but I remember the other guy. And I'm like, bro, I'm not watching this. So now I'm getting, I'm getting defense. I ain't watching that shit no more, gang. I'm not watching this shit. Okay, that's the last time I talked to her. The next time I talked to her, she asked me one random day, like three days later, yo, could I get your friends' names and numbers? Bro, you still trying to like I say, yo, you fucked them. You can't get their name and number. Why the fuck you need me to get their name and number? I don't know. Like, come on, bro. Why you keep asking my niggas? You don't fuck. <laughs> Someone allegedly gets raped in your house, and you're like, come on, man. I don't know them niggas. <laughs> Leave me out of this. It's like this is the problem of inviting randoms to your house, bro. <laughs> you are responsible for what happened inside your home. <laughs> Unfortunately. Oh my god, what a fucking shit show. Fuck. Yo, could I get their names and numbers? Bruh. So I say, what? you know, because she keep wanting to say, I want to know what exactly what happened. Do you sure nobody used the condom? I said, bruh, from the video I seen, I ain't seen them niggas use a condom type shit. By the way, here's the thing, and, I keep, and for the guys who's watching. Imagine that's the first thing you notice, though. It's such an odd detail, isn't it? I know it's obviously important, but noticing something like that, is very specific, isn't it? That means you are really paying attention and probably enjoying what you're watching. Like, there was no condom. He pulled your hair. He let into your. He let into whisper into your ear. It's like, bro, like, what is going on here? Are you heartbroken or are you turned on? This is what being a good guy gets you, because I could have acted like nothing happened. I could have just chalked it to the game, which I probably should have, and be like, that's a girl. You know how girls are. Yo, I've thought about this a million times. I really think that me making her feel some shame made all this happen. 
or you kept drilling her about it and then she kept piecing and then she the more she fought the more she was able to piece together what happened and she put it together maybe he pushed her into actually remembering what happened if he would have just left her alone <laughs> none of this would have happened <laughs> maybe that's actually the case <laughs> so we fucked his friends over by being too nosy because the day after when she walked up to me she said she had fun and I'm the one feeling the way like, bro, you have fun fucking other niggas, bro. So this is what I'm trying to tell you. Being a good guy, cut that shit out, man. Don't help no, like, bro. If it don't got to do with you, man, I'm let everybody get out of the mud. Fuck that shit. What does this story have to do about being a good guy? This is a story of a dude allowing his lust and his dick to dictate his nights out and being too intoxicated and not in control of his, you know, of his um, surroundings and situations and allowing a situation to get out of hand that he could have easily been in control of. Because if he was up when they all came back home from the Antonio Brown pool party, none of this would have happened. Most likely if he was up and it was him, his two homies and this cheeky link, most guys in that situation would hang out you know, have a couple more drinks at the crib and then make their way out because no one wants to be in a crib just hanging out while your guy is getting up to his shit in the next room. You know what I mean? It's a bit awkward. So they would have probably been left alone for the majority of the night. They would have gone and nothing would have been okay. But the fact that he wasn't in control of himself, the fact that he went too crazy is what led to all this shit. So there is no good guy here. No one's a good guy here. They're all fucking awful people. The girl involved, the two homies, him, all terrible terrible bottom feeding people all of them if what Aka is saying is true about the girl and she's now trying to falsely accuse his friends of rape she's horrible if she, if it's not true and she still put herself in a situation where she got taken advantage of in this way it's horrible still if he's if his friends took advantage of a girl in that situation they're fucking horrible like everybody in this situation every character is deplorable there's no one to root for in this no one shit so anyway she keep asking, send, she say, yo, I want to see the video. I'm, I keep telling her, I'm not going to keep watching a video where you're fucking my friends. You were supposed to be fucking with me. Okay. She asked me for my, my friend's names or whatever. I say, yo, my you know, friends. I'm going to give you my man's number. Still referring to his friends as well. It's so sad, man. Those guys are actually still his bros. Imagine. I said, whatever you want to know about that night, he fucked you. You go talk to him. Y'all go talk. Okay. All right. When I get home, I was coming from my studio. And when I get home, 20 minutes after I get home, that's when the raid happens. My mama screaming, she, she's saying, get the gun. I'm looking on my shit. I could see police. I put my gun away. I locked the other way, gun, guns away. They put me, my mom, Cheyenne in cuffs. They bring me down to the station. I don't know, at this point, I don't know what it's about. They're asking me about the situation. Yo, what's whatever, blah, 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 blah. Let me tell you why they did the raid and why they did the search warrant on my crib. And this is another thing. Yo, after that, bro, like even to this day, right now, I, I pay $4,000 for an apartment I don't go to. I got an apartment right now I do not go to because I refuse to bring people back to my crib. I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> Again, I guess is I wish I was more of a psychologist, but there's definitely something about when guys do this, like unnecessary mentionings of money and stuff and stuff they have, like what, what, what relevance does this have to the story? Like, you know, like uh, there is something manipulative and conniving about this, isn't it? Just unnecessary mentions of money and material things and shit. It's like, okay, you've got an apartment you don't use. Cool. Like <laughs> you're just talking about your friend running a train on your fucking cheeky link. What does this have to do with it? The reason why they did that search warrant, the reason why they kicked the door off my my, my, my fucking, they kicked my door off. Well, obviously my mom didn't open the door. It was door. just did what they had to do. Very expensive door. But they kicked it off because they felt like my mom, you know, like it's stalling or some shit. The reason why they did that is because Shorty went to the cops and the cops reading and listening to her side of the story, they're saying, oh yeah, Shorty got R-worded Academics got the tape. It's at his house, but he don't want to give up the tape. So that's their whole mentality. Act don't want to give up the tape. Does that make sense to you? Could a police get a search warrant 
to confiscate your CCTV camera footage and computers because of one person's accusation that quickly huh no questioning no nothing just she comes in with a story and then they can suddenly bust down your door and take you off or you know take you into the station and what uh, i don't know i don't know i don't know everything is on my house is documented on tape so they kicked my door off took all my cell phones took my dvr and then they bring it down to the station also here's the thing everybody knows me in my like like where i'm from i'm like the popular nigga in my town <laughs> the popular you're the guy that has a lot of money i don't think you're popular you know let's just this is what the interesting way he kind of sees himself to be fair but hey let him live so now they bring it down there Nigga, they even called me. I said, uh, like, because at first I was so be. I didn't even know what was going on. By the way, I get like, and I'll tell you the truth. This is facts. My nigga, I'm a, I'm a rich nigga, expensive nigga. My nigga, I spent a hundred thousand. I, I got a hundred thousand dollar retainer on a lawyer, and I, and I never got charged with nothing. But they serve a search warrant on my crib, so they serve a search warrant and they, they they interrogated me. So I got the best lawyer known to man. I get that lawyer. We're trying to figure out what's going on. They're like, oh, we're investigating this sexual assault, alleged sexual assault. Long story short. Also, don't you find it interesting? He talks about everybody else situation, but he never spoke about this when it happened. Only now that the girl's trying to expose him, he's now coming out with all the truth, quote unquote. The double standards of some of these, you know, gossipy content creators is kind of crazy, isn't it? You get into everyone's business, you, you microanalyze, um, you know, armchair fucking psychologist shit with people. You scrutinize, you judge. But then when you get into some real passer, some real dicey, dicey shit, he was fucking mute. He didn't, he didn't hear a single lick about this whole shit, about this attempted or alleged um, rape situation that happened in his house. He didn't hear about none of it until he mentioned it. I wonder why. And this is why Shorty, who thinks she got something over my head, Bro, it's clear as day on tape. You feel me? Matter of fact, I, I still think the, the the county got my DVR because I just got a new DVR. Um, by the way, they sent me all type of shit like your act you good, like they nothing nothing with you, like you're straight. And here's the thing, my friends, <laughs> no Susie Santana, who's on the tape fucking the girl, they didn't get charged. It was like, yo, hey, listen, there isn't enough evidence that showcase that you didn't want to fuck them. So the niggas didn't get charged. They raided my crib because it happened. And, and, and this is what the lesson I was trying to tell the niggas. Bro, don't invite. Yo, yo, remember when I was talking to Kaisenet? Anyways, um, you get the point of that story. Let's switch to some other clips. Um, in general, in general, the conclusion of this fucking horrendous story is that most guys, most women, wouldn't let themselves be put in this type of situation anyway. I think that's what he's overlooking. Like the fact that he got himself into this situation is a more of a bad indictment on him as a person, his current state of mind and where he's the place he's at in life and shit and the issues he hasn't dealt with, as opposed to the trifling nature of some girls out there. Yes, maybe there are some bad actors involved in the story, like the alleged homies, like this alleged sneaky link that, you know, at the first instance fucking gave it up to two of his friends that she barely knows. Cool. But still, this situation was in his control. And if he was on his shit more, if he was, you know, a little bit tighter with how he deals with things, this wouldn't have been a situation. This is more so as a consequence of being sloppy. And, you know, he's looking sloppy, he's looking haggard, he acts it. And unfortunately, he's now having some real life consequences. And again, I like Ackman. I like his streams. I think he's super entertaining. I like the fucking page. I read all the news. I check his clips out on Twitter and stuff. So, you know, I wouldn't want anything to happen to him. Do you know what I mean? That would be a sad thing because he's obviously a good source for information out there in the hip hop, urban music, whatever space it may be. Um, and I hope he takes this lesson um, or this thing seriously and makes some adjustments. He doesn't sound like he is but i hope he does because this isn't normal like this doesn't happen to regular people and he needs to wake up and realize that instead of kind of making it seem like yeah this is a standard normal thing that happens with guys with money. No, it's not even guys with money even guys who are in the same situation as him 
know, in terms of how they acquired their money and how it changed their life wouldn't put himself in these situations and he needs to take more personal responsibility accountability for it to avoid it happening again but i have a feeling unfortunately he won't and it will probably end in tears for him that's the real real rap history of it because you know let's look at the truth the guy's in his mid-30s he's rich as fuck um why is there a need to change think about it why would you change if you're that wealthy and you've been able to do what you need to do your whole life why would you change now there's no in incentive to so um that's the crazy part but what makes this worse is this clip the lady in question decided to step out in front of the camera the lady who's in allegedly on the cctv footage with his friends uh, decided to make herself public and she put out this video um it's looking fucking dicey for act i hope this isn't true but this is the lady allegedly I look crazy right now, but I'm not going to stand here and let this man continue to lie about me. That's not what happened, academics. You know that that's not what happened. And for you to pretend that you didn't do anything, for you to pretend that you didn't do anything, that I just went to your house and I'm just some thought, like we didn't know each other for two years. You tried to save yourself after your friends assaulted me. Whether or not you got drunk or not, I know that when you woke up, you were on top of me too. You raped me too, and a test, a rape kit was done. You know what? I'm gonna come back with my own story. This what you wanted, and you're about to get it. I've been quiet for way too long. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> so she's not only suggesting that the uh, the 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 sexual intercourse took place with the friends, so she's confirming that. But she's obviously saying that it wasn't consensual. And she's also now saying that Ak was involved in the fucking grape. I told you that bit about the story where his friends woke him up and said, hey, there's a girl in your house you didn't know about. And he jumped from trying to wake her up to being outside talking to her. I told you there were some gaps missing. And this is why. And this is the issue because even if she's lying, imagine she's lying. Let's 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 work a scenario out where this girl is lying she's lying out of her front out of her fucking teeth right lying through her teeth sorry there's no way of being certain that she's lying because everybody in the situation was completely obliterated drunk mainly academics the homeowner the person that invited all these people to his house the person that's ultimately responsible for what goes on in his house right to a certain degree that's the issue when you get sloppy drunk because now you open yourself up to these accusations. Now, she could be lying. She could be telling the truth, but we don't know. And he has no real leg to stand on without the CCTV footage. So I'm hoping the footage again, I'm not too sure how footage can ascertain if it's consensual. Because when it comes to the court stuff, you know, it's really strange in terms of how they can, I don't know how they'll be able to, you know, deduce if what happened on the tape was consensual. Although he did say there's audio, you know, recording gizmos all over the house and so maybe they was able to pick up some audio of them asking permission or something i don't really know but if he hasn't got that evidence on hand <sighs> yo crazy and again think about how this situation all happened because of the hasty decision to go and turn up randomly out of the blue to fucking uh, you know antonio brown's fucking pool party thing nothing good happens after 9 p.m and a real player, a real guy knows you don't just spontaneously go to places when people just tell you to go. If you're out at a motive somewhere and you're near and you can get there, cool. But if you're at your house chilling, to leave your house and purposely put yourself in situations, it never usually ends well. I'm not going to lie. And I'm, a, I'm talking of, about this as a certified fucking party boy. Rarely, if ever, have I left my house with no... Imagine if I've been at home, no intention of going out, and somebody's like, hey... Ag, come out to this rave. And I've left and it's been good. Very rarely. Usually you make an effort to plan something and you go and it's good or it's not. But very rarely have I been to a place and somebody's texted me spurred moment and said, come and it's good. It's always ended up being a waste of time. You're regretting it. You spent too much money in an Uber. You lost your phone. You're what? I mean, always something dumb happens. 
So that's the first mistake he made. Shouldn't have stepped outside the house in the first place. And when he did, he should have been tightened. He should have been tightened up. There should have been a plan of action with the boys about what they're going to do when they get there, about having a rule of not bringing back any straggler lungs to the fucking crib, um, whatever. Or if they do, they have to discuss it before they bring them back. All this sort of shit. He didn't. And now he opened himself up to this absolute madness that's going on. So let's see how this plays out. But it's not looking good because now people are dissecting his relationships and accusing him of some other crazy shit look at this tweet from this guy called nate rerun on fucking twitter he says allegedly academics is linking and flying out underage girls and keeping in contact with girls to turn 18 to have sex with that sounds a bit crystallierish isn't it that sounds a bit crystallierish this is a new story and there are multiple girls coming out asking um coming out about him making them drink to the point of unconsciousness and unresponsive so they can assault them oh my god so let's open the pictures look what happens when you move fucking sloppy Ak, little Ak, I guess that's his personal Instagram on Instagram, right? I, I didn't, I didn't know that was his personal page. So he's with communication with this person. He says, "Where are you from?" They say, "Michigan." He says, "When you eighteen?" <laughs> <laughs> In four K. When are you? I swear to God, I've said some wild shit back in the day, right? wild shit back in the day online i've said some wild shit in the dms i've said some wild shit on msn on fucking you know uh blackberry messenger on sms or what i've said some wild shit back in the day but i promise you hand on heart on my mum's life on my brother's life on my dad's life i've never uttered the words when are you turning 18 <laughs> <laughs> never <laughs> i swear in my life i've never been in a situation where i've hey when are you turning 18 are you insane fucking hell bro and this is academics too he's no you know this isn't like you know this isn't kai cena you know if you're kai cena and you're like 21 maybe it's a bit different 22 and you're asking a girl they're 18 it's a bit it hits a bit different but when you're act and you're in your mid-30s and you're asking girls when they're turning 18 i'm sorry but you sound insane <sighs> did he says uh, did you already make your video hell no lol he says can i be in it yo cousin fine next one it shows him a picture with to be fair it seems like he has you know what's interesting about academics is taste in girls it seems like and this is not a shade on the women but it seems like he takes what he's given does that make any sense there's no like there's nothing tying them together like you know style wise look wise they're all just random from the Cheyenne to the Selena Powell to the other one. I think it's called Angelica, right? The other one, is it Angelica? The one that kind of looked like she was always sad. They all just look random. So clearly he just like, if you flirt well enough with him in the DMs, it's on. You know what I mean? He doesn't really have a type. <laughs> Academics is type is vagina. <laughs> consensual sex is academics type what's your type consensual sex <laughs> you know <laughs> because they're all so random there's nothing similar about these girls whatsoever there's no types because even chris Alia, in his dodgy underage shit he had there was, there was all the, the particular type they were all kind of dainty tattoo kind of um suicide girl adjacent looking whereas ak is just they're just all over the place um another picture here what's this show this is a picture of a text message it shows i linked okay this is somebody talking to that girl probably to that guy nate rerun so this is probably an alleged victim i linked with him this year but it felt different or oh, it felt different or the situation was different anyway i linked with him this year but it felt different and i realized he was a predator so i didn't have sex with him <laughs> i love girl fucking logic as well and reasoning 
I had sex with him a few times. Then one day I woke up. Oh, he's a predator. It's like, how do you? Anyway, whatever. Let's continue. Now he got his bitch harassing me, calling me a fan. I linked him in July for the last time. He invited a girl over and he said he wasn't sure if she was 17 or 18, but she still fucked her, but he still fucked her. I get being into young girls, but if you are mid thirties and you're dealing with 17 year olds and 18 year olds, there's something wrong with you. I don't care because I find it hard to have conversations with like, people are like in their mid-20s early 20s like not just guys imagine trying to engage in some sort of like sexual relationship with a 17 year old what the fuck are you talking about especially academics and how he carries himself like what is that situation like you're literally an older brother in some cases you could literally be their dad no technically um he kept trying to make us drink and take our clothes off while we were in the backyard. So he loves a little bit of backyard fun, right? Um, pun intended. Let's continue. So I've been dealing with him since I was 17, but he waited to fly me out until I turned 18. I don't understand the logic of that 18 thing because think about this. If you get caught, does it make your case better that the girl was 18? Is that your defense? Oh no, she's 18, she's legal. That also sounds wild and nasty. Like, that doesn't make you look better. Do you know what I mean? The fact that you're in your late 30s or mid or mid 30s, whatever, like them, and you're fucking a teenager, it's always going to look a bit f funny. But waiting, it's like, you know what? This sounds odd. Again, please forgive me for saying this. It's actually probably. <sighs> You might as well just be brazen and fuck a teenager instead of doing this whole like wait until you're 18 thing because that's that's oddly way more premeditated. The fact that you're like waiting for them to turn a particular age. You're like waiting in the fucking, in the shadows or in the bushes like BGL holding a fucking glass of whiskey waiting for them to turn a certain age and then you're going to pounce. That's actually sounds a way more creepy than just being fuck it. I'm the guy that goes for kids. You know, that sounds horrible. I know, trust me. But planning it like that, like waiting until someone does that, you know, what, and what, putting in your calendar as a reminder or something. It's like, anyway, every year when he gets a new cum, what? Every year when he gets a new cum rag, they DM me and her, who's the cum rag? The girls or just an actual cum rag? God almighty. They DM me and harass me to tell me I'm crazy, even though I never talk about him or relatedly or really expose him for being the predator that he is. Yo. And this is the guy that beyond fucking panels on Fresh and Fit barking at OnlyFans girls because they dare to like take off their clothes and fuck for money on behind a fucking paywall, trying to shame them for like, you know deciding to i don't know put their future in their own hands and while they're young and virile and attractive make as much money as they can i don't know whatever right he tries to shame these people but look at the stuff he's getting up to behind closed doors this is probably one of those instances where if you ever hear a dude who's like super rah-rah anti-sex work and hard on thoughts all this sort of shit it's probably like the same thing about like you know anti-lgbtq politicians who usually always get exposed for like you know being down low i bet you you can correlate a dude that is super harsh on thoughts and talks really aggressively about women and basically says they don't deserve anything is probably the same guy that's up to some crazy shit himself behind closed doors with ladies it's probably safe to assume that because you're definitely um what's that thing called you're definitely trying to make up for something, you know? You're definitely trying to cover your own back in some way. But again, wild, wild, wild fucking situation um, Ak has involved himself in. And yeah, man, let's see how it kind of plays out, innit? Let's see how it plays out. It's not looking good. It's looking fucking dicey. He only has himself to blame, to be perfectly honest and blunt. Um, you know, regular dudes, normal dudes of a nine to five wouldn't get in a situation. He gets himself in a situation because he's just too thirsty. Simple as that. Too much first. Too much first. Um, not enough ability. 
to contain the first and now look at him now fucking look at him it's absolutely heinous it really really fucking is um moving on let's talk about this so we move on to the george stuff um let's talk one more about the stuff so i didn't mention this clip right this is probably the best clip of them all from the from the entire clip right so this is probably one of the best bits of this entire story so in that clip i played earlier of academics talking about you know him basically getting in the situation where he's being blackmailed and allegedly or he's been accused of grape and all this sort of shit there's also this story where his ex-girlfriend <laughs> stole five hundred thousand dollars from him have you heard this story absolutely wild this is how forgiving i am and this is why y'all gonna call me a simp and i'm gonna take it chat there was a point i don't i don't know more so for all y'all niggas who think y'all got it y'all just gonna come get a different result there was a time i used to have a million dollars cash in my crib that's a fact do you know this bitch stole half a million dollars from me cash so shy glizzy stole five hundred thousand dollars cash from him in fifty thousand dollar increments she put him in socks allegedly when he was chucking out of her house and you know they're going through their up up teep fucking breakup he told her to leave and she decided to stuff his dollars into her socks as though she was leaving and he only saw it because i think he had access to her ring camera or something like that most likely he's going to get back with this girl that's a really sad and pathetic thing about this whole situation most likely he'll end up getting back with this fucking crazy woman who has put his whole life in turmoil and it will never end again even though i think he the latest update he gave was that she's in prison now allegedly the police picked her up for whatever the stealing of the money because i guess it's a felony and she's going to be charged in some way because i guess it's also relating to domestic violence i'm not really sure that's what he said um so she's allegedly been booked at the moment and currently being processed and all that sort of shit but i still have a feeling if she doesn't get crazy double digit numbers he's still gonna hold her down he probably put money in her books he'll probably go and visit her um he'll probably send her mail he'll probably still hook up with her when she gets out like this story will never end like they are literally joined at the hip um it's crazy because she's done so much shit to him that normal person would have already run a mile like there's no amount of crazy pussy that would ever keep somebody a normal person well-adjusted person um in that kind of situation but this is also proof that his lack of experience with women in general forget sex just just even maybe even people he's probably not even matured enough to be in relationships and stuff is really really sad and it's even sadder when you realize that i think even today in this stream today's stream without i'm recording it he said something like um he said something like he said something like in today's stream that he wants to have a family that's what he said he said he wants to have a family he said he wants to have a fucking family imagine that imagine imagine so um yeah absolutely crazy situation um i don't know <laughs> there's nothing to be learned from this apart from that academics is actually a simp he's not half of thoughts he's actually a simp and he doesn't know it that's the saddest thing there's no harm in actually proudly being a simp uh, you know and simping out for girls and giving them your money and your time and doing everything you want for them and stuff and bending over backwards for them cool when you're proud of it but acting like you're some sort of bad boy you're some sort of lafario you're some sort of you know fucking rico suave and shit when really you are essentially you know bribing girls with money and gifts and stuff to spend time with you and then the ones that do are taking advantage of you and you don't even know it you don't even know it until it's too late fucking tragic fucking absolutely tragic <laughs>